say the word and I will Give go ahead. Our live. All right, it's all yours. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so, uh, I'm Severa. Um, I am uh, a speedrunner of various things, primarily Axiom Verge. Um, I run any percent, any percent, no major glitches, 100%. I've run 100% items. Um, I haven't run low percent. Nobody runs low percent anymore. Um, and tonight I'm going to be doing a 100% run of Axiom Verge for y'all. Um, so if you don't know Axiom Verge, it is a 2015 Metroid style game by Tom Hatt. Um, and in true Metroid style, uh, to start out, you are only able to go left to pick up your first item, which will enable you to go right. Um, so this first weapon <laughs> thing that we pick up is the Axiom Disruptor. It's our first weapon because we're not a bounty hunter, we're a scientist. We are Trace, a physicist who was in a laser lab explosion and was transported to the alien world of Sudra with no memory of how or why we got here. And this is our, our way of navigating through the world is that we have this gun. Um, because, of course, we have a gun. Um, so we're going to climb up Brinstar. And at the top of Brinstar, we're going to go looking for another gun. Um, and that gun is going to enable us to flip switches. Um, the funny thing about the gun that we're about to pick up, um, that we are on our way to pick up, is that it is actually the gun that does the most damage in the game if you use it right. Um, but it's almost impossible for a human to use correctly, so we almost never use it for damage purposes. Um, so uh, here we are at the top of the what is known as the Brinstar Climb, and now we have Nova. And instead of climbing back down, we're actually just going to save warp out of here. We have an $18 donation uh, from D&E from DC. Um, thank you, D&E, for the $18 donation to the ALS Association. So armed with the Nova, which we are, again, not going to use just yet. You'll see it in a moment. Um, we are going to flip some switches, and we're going to go fight the first boss of this game. Um, the first boss fight occurs uh, less than three minutes into the game. Um, and so the boss that we are going to fight is a, a happy-go-lucky guy named Zetter. And um, he's... Uh, he's interesting. Um, we're basically going to manipulate his movement. Now, this is a save room, uh, much like the one that we started the game in. And the reason that I'm in here is because I need to pick up these map tiles. And remember, this is a 100% run. So I can't just go through everywhere as fast as possible. I have to make sure to pick up the map tiles. And there's no point in the game where we're actually going to come back to this particular area. Um, thanks, everyone, for the good luck in chat. <laughs> um, this is Zetter. Um, and so basically what we're going to do is we're going to hang out over here, and we are going to uh, manipulate Zetter into a particular movement pattern that's going to make him do this. Um, and by causing him to float back in this particular pattern, we get a lot more shots off on him in a small period of time. Now, I took a, sh uh, a hit from him at the beginning, and so that's going to slow down this fight overall. Um, but there we go. That's that's the first boss of the game. Pretty tough, as you can see. Um, that guy is really difficult. Um, we'll see another version of him later on in the game, who is the literal hardest boss in the game. Um, so look out for that. We now have a laser drill because of course we have a laser drill and this allows us to break blocks and this is the other thing that we need to move out of the first area of the game. Um, so we're just going to break these blocks. Um, we're going to pick up this little octagon looking thing, which is a power node. So that makes our drill drill faster. It makes our weapons shoot stronger. Um, so we're a little bit more powerful now. And uh, we are going to use this power to walk out of this area of the game without collecting most of the other items that are here. Um, in fact, most of them we can't collect anyway. Um, so we're just going to proceed on uh, to the next area of the game. At this point, right, we're, we're still pretty weak. We're still pretty little. Um, and if you look at my health bar in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you may notice that there are actually uh, two little squares there. Um, and those two little squares each represent 100 points of health. Um, this is a health node. It gives me another 100 points of health. It is your energy tank of this game. Um, and eventually we'll have to pick up all of them. This game uh, also has health node fragments and power node fragments, which essentially act like heart pieces from The Legend of Zelda. Um, and so if you collect, uh, I think it's five health node fragments or six power node fragments, they act as though they were a whole health node or whole power node. 
Um, we are now in the second area of the game. This is Absu. Um, a laser drill because why not, yes. Um, so Absu is yet another area in which we are going to spend as little time as possible right now. Um, we're only really here to pick up a couple of progression items. Um, in the room that we are about to come to, uh, there is this giant robotic head hanging over a short range lightning gun. This is Kilver. Um, Kilver is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Um, and uh, I'm basically going to be using this to deal damage to almost everything. Um, not everything, but almost everything for most of the rest of the game um, until we get the best weapon in the game, which is not the most powerful <laughs> by a long shot. Um, <laughs> yeah, so in the room with the big robot, I jumped under her chin to avoid dropping uh, dropping down below. Um, that's called chin jump. It's actually pretty difficult. Um, and there is a running joke in the Axiom Verge community that if you do that during a 100% run, it's an invalid run. Um, because our former world record holder, Willow, uh, was not able to do it for a long time. <laughs> um, so again, I ran out of my way to get some map tiles. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to stop in a save room, not for the purpose of saving the game, but for uh, the purpose of getting map tiles that we're not really going to have a chance to get back. Now, we are in the foyer. Fun fact, in the game code, these are called boss foyers with the big insects right before the boss. Um, this is the second boss, Telal. Um, Telal is mostly armored from the front, uh, so we're going to go behind him. We're just going to take a bunch of damage. I have a little tiny sliver of health. It's no big deal. Um, now we're just going to hang out behind Talal and nail him from behind. Um, you know, he's just going to sit here and do absolutely nothing to us except try to fire to the left because Talal cannot turn around with that chunky body of his. Um, you know, uh, it's just the, the, the person who put him in this room did not think about what his accessibility needs were. Um, and so unfortunately, that makes for a, a very easy fight for us. Um, in this room, we are going to pick up the second progression item that we came to Absu for. This is the Address Disruptor. There are a lot of disruptors in this game. And we can use this to glitch platforms into existence um, and also to transform bubbles into floating platforms. Now, I caught the very first one of these. If you happen to miss that and catch the second one, it costs you about five seconds. Um, so it's really good to be able to catch the first one, um, though it, it, it is, uh, it's quite tight motion through that room. Um, so we will be grabbing another health node here, which was why I was not particularly worried about my health. So now I'm full again, um, and I have another 100 health to boot. Um, but we're basically going to book it out of Apsu at this point. Um, this is just, uh, this is all like, get me to the next area as quickly as possible. Uh, for, uh, for the first three areas of the game, we just like, mostly are uh, trying to get from point A to point B as fast as we can. Um, this is Squid Room. Um, the way that I did Squid Room just now, only stopping once for the very first squid shots, is called a full YOLO. Um, that if you don't get the full YOLO, you take a very expensive hit from one of those squids and fall down a hole and it costs you a lot of time. Um... got a $19 donation. Um, I will try to read that in just one second. I will have a good opportunity to hear uh, from Pease MBS. Thank you all so much for having me. I really enjoyed playing one of my favorite childhood games in hopes of helping people fight ALS. My donation is $9 for making a 9 chain in Mean Bean Machine and $10 for making a 10 chain in Puyo Puyo 2. Good luck to everyone out there and stay safe. Um, so we are now in the third area of the game. Uh, this is Z. Um, these ant-like things, um, they do a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, so we are mostly uh, going to try to avoid taking damage from them. Um, uh, and uh, with, with just a couple of exceptions. In that first room, I actually took two hits from the ants because it's way faster to get through the room that way. Um, we are coming up on uh, one of the most egregious run killers uh, for early runners. Um, this is a room that we call YOLO room, and there are really only two things called YOLO in this. There's the full YOLO squid room that I did before, uh, and there's this room. Um, you'll see why we call this YOLO room. Sorry, I just need to concentrate on this room. Oop. And 
that's YOLO room. Um, it's very easy, <laughs> hopefully, to see how one might lose a run uh, pretty early there. Um, YOLO room is extremely dangerous. Enemies deal a lot of damage, and um, if you die there, you go all the way back to the beginning of the game. So that's like basically the end of your run for the most part, unless you are, you know, really um, uh, just kind of learning things and willing to kind of stick it out to run all the way back there. Um, we have now made it through the first three areas of the game, and we are in Kerr. Um, Kerr is area four, um, and Kerr is where we start to uh, make things weird, so to speak. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do that's a little unusual is I'm going to save the game. There are three different active 100% routes in Axiom Verge right now. Um, you are seeing uh, right now the newest, which is mine. Um, and uh, this is... Uh, this is a little bit of a weird route um, because I do things both strange in the early game um, and strange in the late game. Um, oh, all right. We lost a little time from a bad jump there. I didn't actually want to take damage. I was hoping that that laser would pass behind that that node. Um, but that vertical shaft is called Mission Impossible for a reason, and it's because all of, of all of the lasers, but also because it's impossible. Um, this room is called the Juicy Room because of these things that fire these gusher-like bullets. Um, it is literally the most disgusting room name in the entire run. We got a $50 donation um, from Neomagus X asking for Axiom Verge the Musical. So the thing that I just got is the Field Disruptor. Um, that is the last Disruptor item that we'll get, and that's the High Jump. And soon I will have to begin singing. Um, but we are about to leave this area and change areas, which means that the music is going to change. So we're just going to hold on a little bit. Uh, hold on a little bit on that song. I have been speedrunning this since um, the beginning of April. Um, is when I began speedrunning this. I'm currently the third place record holder for at 100%. All right. um, it's a little hard for me to hear the music over the spiders. Um, so I apologize. There are hoppers here, and we are going to try to pick up Tass, jump here, and we missed it, and now we'll climb to the top to fight the next boss. Okay, um, really quickly, um, yeah, so um, this next boss is... Oh, one sec. We just did the Pepto Bistrol, now we're gonna sit here and we're gonna shoot this boss from down here. We're just gonna diagonally shoot. This boss is so free as long as you can make the Pepto Bistrol. There's no problem if you can make it all the way here. There's no damage that you can take until this boss is... Oh, and now the boss is dead. Um, so I've been running this for uh, close to six months. Um, I started out with any percent. Um, which has a whole bunch of really funky, cool glitches, all of which you will see in this run. Um, and um, this is the white coat. It lets us pass through walls um, just really quickly before. <laughs> um, and so now we save warp back to Kerr, where we're going to use the white coat to go and get our next progression item, the remote drone. We're climbing Mission Impossible again. Ooh, the music here's kind of creepy. Now we oh. Now we do the drone climb. Now we do the drone climb. We have these enemies like cranes. 
Um, so there are a bunch of enemies in this area, these armadillos, that do just a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, and we're mostly going to damage boost through them when possible um, to gain additional health by killing them. This area is full of boulders and bulls and also these snapper things. We're gonna bait them with jumps, jumpy armadillo, shoot the bull, the bull. And now we go in here to get the drone. We're gonna get a remote drone now. And there we save warp again. Oh my gosh, we have a $10 donation from Two Snack. So hyped for this Axiom Verge run. Thank you so much, Two Snack. Folks, for those of you who do not know, um, Two Snack, um, he's a gentleman and a scholar. Um, oop, I just beefed that a little bit. Um, so we are coming back here to get another item. This one's the upgrade for our glitch gun. We'll go through this door, send our drone right through this hole to find a switch to flip. Okay, um, I need to give my singing voice a rest from the falsettos, but we're going to pass through here and we're going to get the address disruptor too. Now this is the first major divergence point from the um, uh, from the oldest uh, of the active 100% routes. Normally at that point in that route, you would save warp all the way back to the beginning of the game. You wouldn't save in lower cur and save warp like I did. Um, but instead, the other two active routes um, are based on the vanilla any percent route, which uses glitches. Um, and most of the glitches that we're going to activate actually involve the grappling hook. Um, all right, DJ Mocha7, thank you so much for coming around for supporting the ALS Association and Retro Block Party. Have a good rest of your time of day. Um, so what we're going to do now is... Um, proceed to this other area of Upper Kerr where we are going to uh, go through the Juicy Climb. Uh, now the Juicy Climb is different from the Juicy Room. Um, it is a vertical shaft full of these juice makers. Um, and so we're going to uh, make our way through this to get to uh, our next boss who is the Scorpion King. Not the Scorpion King from the movie. That's a little bit of a different thing. Um, but we're going to navigate this tunnel and uh, glitch a little guy here to provide us some friendly lasers. Now this dude is going to drill this block for us, which we couldn't do ourselves. So we really appreciate the help of that little laser wart. Um, we're going to climb up here and we're actually going to get our first health node fragment. Um, and so this is really convenient for us because it provides us a nice way to refill our health up to full just before this boss without having to use a save point. We don't want to use a save point because um, if we use a save point, we won't be able to warp back to the place that we want to be um, after we beat the boss and collect the next item. So we're, we're just going to stop in here real quick. Um, like usual, we are going to grab this um, map tile for the save point bat that thing those those little like shrimpy things they do a ton of damage you do not want to get hit by one of them right before you fight this boss so this is gertab um he's pretty tough uh what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go here and spam lightning at him um like at his weak point and um yeah so that was a pretty hard fight um if you do not do that fast enough you will die see he turned around once and took off well more than half my life um, there, there is, it is possible to, uh, to do that fast enough that he doesn't turn around at all. Um, but if you were to fight Gertab the intended way, uh, you would basically be firing Nova underneath him and then detonating it so that some of the little bullet fragments hit his weak point. It takes a really long time, um, compared to the quick kill. Um, okay, so funny story about the room that we are in now. This is the room with the grappling hook in it. 
Um, at the very end of the development cycle of Axiom Verge, um, Tom Happ, the developer and designer and everything of this game, um, went through all of the rooms in the game and rebalanced them. Um, you know, changed number of enemies in rooms, damage dealt, all of that. Um, and uh, just forgot this room. Um, so this room has twice as many enemies as any other room in the game. Um, and they deal tons of just absolute gobs of damage. Um, everything in here, just like ridiculous amounts of damage. Um, and there's, there's, they're everywhere. Um, so it's actually very hard to move through this safely and, and live. Um, and requires uh, a, a pretty significant amount of practice. Um, so we're going to come over here. We're going to flip this switch by firing Kilver at it. Um, now, this room is actually extremely cavernous, so we're going to have to take sort of a weird route in order to get all of the map tiles, because we're never coming back here again. We are literally never coming back to this room, so we better get everything. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, there are a whole bunch of lower routes, and we're going to worry about those in a minute, but the first thing that we're going to do is pop our drone down here to pick up a couple of map tiles that are especially persnickety, and then we're going to call our drone back to us. And we're going to whoop, whoop, boom. Now we got a power node. Um, we'll pick up another map tile by following the drone over there. And then we'll recall it and send Trace out to go send the drone out to pick up the grappling hook. Okay, so now we can navigate this room. Trace is now able to uh, move high enough through the air that uh, we can get through this platforming segment. Um, and so we're just going to do that, making sure that we grab all the map tiles that we need. Um, and then there's one little thing that we forgot over here that we couldn't get before. Um, see, the drone doesn't have the high jump. Only Trace has the high jump. So we do have to come over here and pick up this node. Uh, so now that we've got that, we've collected all of the map tiles here, and we're going to save warp back to lower Kerr. Um, so this is where the run gets interesting. We now have the grappling hook. The grappling hook lets us do weird stuff. Um, who wants to see some glitches? Can I get can I get some uh, some some haze some yos in the chat for people who want to see some glitches? All right, we got it. We got at least one enthusiastic glitch watcher. Um, we got Enlarged Chonk, who's pretty hyped for glitches. Thank you, Enlarged Chonk. Um, so we are going to uh, ride this giant head. This is Oraka. Um, she is one of the Rusalki. They're these, like, giant war machines that are, like, vaguely Russian-themed. Um, we're going to take a quick stop to save this, to save the game here so that we can save warp back to a, um, an advantageous spot later. Uh, cause this is the, this is really the only good save point on the way to where we're going. Um, and we are going to hop back down here and ride Araka all the way to our next target area. Now what the game wants you to do is take the grappling hook, run all the way back to the starting area that we were in, Erebu. Um... Use the address disruptor to, uh, the upgraded address disruptor to glitch through some walls <clears throat> and go to an area called Ukana, where we will get our next movement power. Um, but that's a long way to go. Uh, so instead, we're just going to uh, use the grappling hook to pop ourselves through that laser barrier that we're not supposed to go to, and then we're going to grapple onto the store. Um, when you pass through a door while you're grappled, the game doesn't expect you to do that, so now it's confused about where we are, and it has teleported us all the way to the top of Ukana, in a room that's not really supposed to exist. From this room, we are going to use the grapple to confuse the game again. One second. I might be... here we go. Come on. There we go. Um, by confusing the game again, we are now going to move into a room that is supposed to exist, which happens to be the save room right outside of the boss of this area. We're in a boss foyer. 
Um, we have skipped an entire sequence at this point. <laughs> um, this is Vision. Um, this is one of the most interesting boss fights in the game, um, and one of the most difficult to do quickly, because I am not controlling Trace in this fight. I'm controlling the boss. Um, and so my, my objective is to make it so that Machine Trace... Oh, thank you for the good luck, Vintage Classic Gamer. Um, can kill me as fast as possible, and also that this ending animation occurs as fast as possible, um, which is why I dropped a bomb next to Trace uh, just before I died. I, the boss? Anyway. Um, so we're going to jump here to get another map tile. And uh, then we are going to go up here and grab this health node. Thank you. Solid bomb bump indeed. Um, that was actually pretty... Uh, I'm pretty happy with how that went. Uh, I wish that um, the uh, grapple clip had not taken so long. Uh, but, you know, these things happen. Um, I was positioned... Uh, I tried to uh, not... Um, what is it that I tried to do? I tried to not be on the exact pixel that I normally like to be on. And that, of course, screwed up the timing for the grapple zip. Um, so now we are here, uh, just kind of floating down. Ooh, 8-Bit Owl with the seven-person raid. Um, thank you, Owl, so much for the raid. Okay, so. Here we are, now we get the brown coat. This is a trench coat, it looks so cool, and it makes us dash. Oh, I forgot to do something important. Um, so I forgot something um, that was a little bit important, and um, that I am going to have to go back and uh, account for. Um, this is going to cost a little bit of time, but not too much. Um, it turns out that we're actually in a really good place for uh, for going back and fixing. Oh, oops! I don't have drone teleport yet. That was that was very silly of me. Um, but we're 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 in a, a fine place to go back and do uh, the thing that I forgot to do. Um, Uh, so really quickly, we're, we're going to go ahead and get that map tile because, um, oh, nope. Once again, I still don't have drone teleport. Um, <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and do an early clear out of a couple of things that we intend to do later. Um, because, uh, we do need to get back to a spot to do a, uh, to grab something that I forgot to get. Um, and so the thing that I forgot to grab is the passcode tool. Um, and if that sounds a little weird to you, uh, it is a little weird. Um, we're going to go ahead and grab this. Uh, recall you there. Um, so the brown coat lets me dash, um, which is pretty great, right? Um, I'm going to really quickly... Oh, nope. Once again, I do not have drone teleport. Um, I'm, I'm kind of on the fly rerouting for something that I forgot that I, I need before we can progress. Um, so this is, this is unfortunately a little bit wonky. Um, but, uh, what we're going to do here is basically just head down here. Um, oops. I mistimed that because I dashed. Um, and we're going to send the drone down here. Now, the passcode tool lets you do a couple of things. Um, the main thing that the passcode tool lets you do is uh, input passcodes. Um, but the passcodes have a variety of effects. Um, and the main effect that we want out of the passcode tool is for uh, is the ability to open up areas that have secret items in them that we need in order to get 100% completion. Um, so that's going to be pretty important to us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save warp. We're going to go back here, which is really where we were supposed to be, um, before. Um, uh, we're, uh, you know, running a little bit, uh, longer than we wanted to here. Um, but it is still, uh, exhibition tradition. Um, yet another Metroid homage that was placed into the game by Tom Hatt. 
is the existence of the Justin Bailey code. And so now we're wearing a Speedo. Um, and we will be completing the rest of the run in a Speedo. Um, so. Um, now we are in Eden. Um, Eden is... Uh, Ooh, Eden is dangerous. Um, so, yeah, there are these ghouls that pop out of the ground. Um, there are these flies that do a lot of damage. Um, there are these things. This is called a blade copter. Um, I call them blade buddies because they want to give you a hug. Um, but it's a very sharp hug, um, and it does just a ridiculous amount of damage. So we don't we don't want them to give us a hug. Oh, yikes. Um, so we're going to try to avoid these as much as possible. Um, we, we don't want to be friends with the Blade Buddies. Sorry, Blade Buddies. Oh. Once again, I do not have Drone Teleport yet. Um, so, uh, in this room, there are a whole bunch of Blade Buddies. Um, and they are, uh, very dangerous. Climbing that room can be really bad. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to send our drone out in the middle of that room to go into this, explore this room, pick up this item. And when I recall the drone, it resets the room that I'm in and the room that the drone is in. Um, but if I happen to be near enemies when I recall the drone to me and it resets the room, those enemies despawn. Um, so I made that room a whole lot safer by despawning those blade buddies. Um, so next we're going to do another major glitch. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to embed ourselves in the wall and then we're just going to walk through it. Um, and that allows us to step through here and get the item that I keep thinking that I have, but I didn't uh, drone teleport. So now I can switch places with the drone. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? Um, uh, and drone teleport actually allows us to move a whole lot faster through the world. Um, it also allows us to get to some places that we weren't able to get to before. And so we're going to take advantage of that now. Um, so in uh, any percent, that trick is used to skip a boss fight entirely. In this, we're not going to use it to skip the boss fight. We are going to use it to uh, do this area in a different order. So normally you have to come fight the boss, get drone teleport, and then clean all of those things up. And then you have to go set up for a death warp. Um, and that... Mm, it's hinky. You have to climb up, then climb back down, then climb back up. Um, and so I'm just rearranging the bits of that a little bit to be more to my liking um, so that I can set up the death warp around the same time as I go to fight the boss. Um, so basically, uh, now that we've collected that power node fragment, we've collected everything that we need uh, from this portion of Eden. Um, oop. And these little drain enemies are, are pretty obnoxious. Uh, so we're going to try to take as much of that with our drone as possible. Um, oh, sorry. There's actually one more, um, one more item down here. Uh, there's a note. There's a whole bunch of lore in this game. There are just notes hanging around everywhere, um, that really kind of tell the story of Axiom Verge. Uh, I'm going to take this a little bit safe because I'm a little bit low on health, but, um... Uh, we're just gonna pop this over here. This guy's gonna collect uh, a couple more map tiles for us. Um, so we're pretty we're pretty low on health at, that point, at this point, and that's actually gonna be good for us. Um, we are going to uh, want to have as little health as possible coming out of the boss fight. Um, we don't want to die during the boss fight, but we do want to have as little health as possible. So we're not going to take the safety save here. We could. We could. Um, but we're not going to. Um, we are instead going to come in here and fight uh, a boss who is incredibly difficult casually, um, but incredibly easy and deterministic uh, in a speedrun. This is Uku. Um, Uku... Um, I'm going to intentionally take some damage from that. Uku takes, uh, is only vulnerable in his mouth, um, but he also spits bees that explode, and if we use them to blow him up, um, then he takes one hit. Um, so that's Uku. Uh, <laughs> and so now we're going to go ahead and set up for this death warp that I was talking about. So I'm just going to pop the drone over here in a corner, because he's been a bad boy. Um, and he's going to sit there and think about what he did for right now. Um, and I'm going to run over to these flies and, and ask them to send me back to my most recent save point, which is, if you remember, down at the bottom of this area near the giant floating head. Um, 
And uh, we're not going to see our drone again for a little while because uh, he really needs a good time out to think about how bad and how naughty he's been. Um, so in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and take a little ride on Araka uh, all the way back to Kerr. Uh, so we're just going to pop on Araka. Araka's going to hang out um, with us. We're going to sit here. Uh, Araka doesn't really talk. She's really more of the strong, silent type. Hey, Vex. Good to see you. Um, and uh, Araka is going to uh, ferry us just all the way back to Kerr. Um, so now we're back at Kerr. Um, and in Kerr, we're going to go all the way down uh, to the bottom of Kerr. And, you know, we're thinking, well, you know, maybe this wasn't really the right punishment for our drone. So we're going to take a lava bath and call our drone. But, hmm, something weird happened. So it turns out that when you recall the drone or teleport trace to the drone's position, um, the game doesn't actually store what area the drone is in, but it does store the position that the drone is in. Um, and that position is used for some corrective measures. If the drone is ever out of bounds, it is corrected to the last valid position the game remembers it being in, um, even though that position was in a completely different region of the game. And it just so happens that that pops us here into uh, this uh, upper area, upper snowy area of Kerr. Um, and so we are... Uh, that is advantageous to us because it gets us the next item that we want, which is the extended drone launcher, um, which is, uh, of course, a drone launcher that fires farther and faster. Um, and pairing that with the drone teleport, we can now move very quickly throughout the world. Um, so we have the dash, we have the drone teleport. Um, it's all uh, very good. We're going to go ahead and grab some map tiles here. Now, the reason that I saved there is because we are about to do uh, what is potentially the most dangerous glitch in the 100% run. Um, it is yet another door grapple trick, but it is possible to soft lock while you're doing this one. Um, and so uh, it is it is useful to be able to just reload from right outside. Um, so one second. Uh, I'm going to be uh, quiet a little bit while I work on this. Um, so it, it is possible to pass through this door without actually successfully grappling, and you will probably see that a couple of times before I succeed on this. Oh, never mind. Got it. Um, first try. Okay, I'm going to be quiet again because I need the game audio here. Um, this is Temple Skip, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where'd you go, door? There we go. Okay. Um, Temple Skip successful. So Temple Skip allows us to skip in uh, a, a um, very... Uh, dangerous section of the game. Um, so uh, in this area, um, there is an item called the Sudran Key, which we'll be going back for. Again, you know, we get 100% of the items, so we, we do have to get it. Um, and that opens these, like, golden gates that block certain areas of the temple off from us. Um, but getting the Sudran Key is incredibly dangerous. It's, in fact, one of the hardest parts of a No Major Glitches run. Um, and so uh, instead of doing that, we skip it by using the grappling hook. Um, the grappling hook, uh, the door grapple basically takes us into uh, a room that is known as Green Hell. You'll, I'll be going back there in a minute because we actually do have to pass through Green Hell uh, backwards, um, both to get map tiles and to get items. Green Hell is also incredibly dangerous, and you have to go through that to get Red Coat, which is the item I just picked up there, um, which improves my dash. Uh, my dash is now three tiles wide instead of two tiles wide. It does damage to enemies, and it provides me with iframes. Um, so uh, this is a really big improvement, and it is much safer to go through Green Hell with Red Coat than it is to go without it. Um, so what we do is just Temple Skip. Okay. So now I need to put in another passcode here. This is going to be the first of the secret items that I get. Um, the passcode here is Iskart Ehanzu, um, which is going to open this area here, which was closed off to me before. Um, 
And so now I just need to make my way through green hell uh, without, you know, dying or anything. Um, enemies here deal a lot of damage, and there are these bright green bush enemies here that... Oh. Um, whoop. Um, they latch onto you, and they do not let go. Um, and so those can be particularly deadly when you're going through green hell forward. Okay, so now we've completed green hell. We're going to go ahead and save here because we're going to save warp back here after we pick up the Sudrin key. Um, there's a few other things that we need in temple. Um, not just the key, but the key is the last thing that we will get. Um, so we're just going to kind of navigate out of here as fast as possible. Now, fun little fact about having my dash and my drone is that if I dash and fire my drone, um, the drone launcher also gets the momentum from the dash. Um, so it is advantageous to dash and throw the drone as much as possible, uh, as long as you, you know, know that there's, you're not going to like bonk the drone on something you don't want to. Um, so again, you know, we're going to come up here, we're going to grab... Uh, map tiles, um, not forgetting map tiles is one of the hardest things in an early, um, in like the early stages of learning 100% runs. So now we can dash through these golden doors. The key would normally have unlocked that golden gate thing, um, but I don't need it anymore. It's three tiles wide. I have the dash that can put me through three tile spaces. Um, so we're just going to go ahead, clean up these map tiles. Um, we grabbed a note that was just lore, um, not like particularly important. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and proceed toward the key room, which would normally be very dangerous, but here is just not. Um, we'll pick up a power note along the way because everybody wants more power. Um, more power is good. Um, nice thing about the drone um, that you probably don't notice, um, a lot of the reason why I go through the door with drones is that the drone sprite is smaller, so it actually takes less time to pass through doors than Trace does, um, which is uh, a really convenient aspect of it. So if you can, if you are in a space where you can launch the drone into a door, um, that's a nice thing that can save you some time. Um, Okay, so um, I had kind of a bad happen to me here. I took uh, a decent amount of damage, so we're actually going to go back here and grab some safety help. Hey! Ultimative. How's it going? All right, now with that safety health, we're, we're pretty much uh, good to go. We're going to dash down here, and now we're going to grab the Sujin key, and we are going to save warp. Um, at this point, we should have collected every item in the temple. Um, the actual name of this temple area is Ekerma. Um, they all have kind of like exotic sounding names. Uh, I didn't go into the map. I wanted to go into the map. Yeah, okay. So there's a little yellow dot on my map that tells me that I have collected all of the... Um, this little yellow dot tells me I've collected all of the items. The little purple one tells me I've collected all the map tiles. So we're actually done with this area. We're going to go back to Kerr. Um, it is now time to do some Kerr cleanup. Not all of Kerr cleanup. Um, this is another wacky thing about my particular route. Uh, nobody else does this. I don't clean up Kerr all at once. Everybody else cleans up Kerr all at once. Um, and I just don't. Um, so there's a couple of tiles, a couple of map tiles that we missed. Um in Gertab's room, so we need to get those. And um, unfortunately, vertical doors are the real final boss in this game. Um, they are the the kind of hardest thing in any given speed run. Um, we're gonna grab this health nude real quick, and then we're gonna pop out in sort of a weird place. This is the room where we initially got the remote drone. Um, and we are going to set up for uh, just uh, a, a strat that I do that, again, nobody else does this. Um, so we're actually, we're going to come here and we're going to pick up this map tile real quick. Um, and then I'm going to pop Trace over here um, and send my drone out this way. Um, so fun thing about popping the drone, um, I'm going to pop the drone in a different room, which is going to reset the room that Trace is in. Um, but Trace is sitting where some drill blocks should be, so the game just moves Trace upward until it finds a valid position for him. So now we're here um, in this little mini dungeon. Um, <laughs> 
So uh, normally to get into this, before we go into this mini dungeon, uh, everybody else finds a uh, convenient place to save and then save warps out from the end of this dungeon. Um, because in order to get in and out of the dungeon, you have to, you have to quote unquote, uh, traverse some tiles that you would then have to backtrack over and there's quite a lot of them It's like not very fast, um, but because I glitched myself kind of directly into the dungeon um, I'm able to do this a little bit faster than everybody else um, And as long as I avoid a couple extra door transitions and use the fact that the drone can move through doors pretty quickly It's actually not that bad to go in and out of this area And I'm not backtracking when I get out of here because I haven't explored these tiles yet um, so I'm gonna go ahead up here and um, pick up this note um, and then mm, can't quite do that, um, unfortunately. Uh, so we are actually going to have to go up and pick up uh, a tile that I missed earlier that I should have gotten, um, it, which is that one. Okay, so now we're going to come down here. Uh, we're going to run kind of uh, over this area. And we are basically just trying to uh, clean up map tiles in this area that we did not get before. Um, and there's a couple of items on the side of this that we want to pick up as well. Snowy Kerr is actually one of my favorite places. Um, it's, it's really pretty, um, but it's also very hard to route efficiently. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of... Oops. Okay, so just real quick double check. Yeah, we got all of the tiles there. That's good, that's, that's nice. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, boop ourselves over here. Um, grab some falling tiles there um, and do a couple of, again, a couple of weird things. Uh, we need to come over here and grab this item. There is just like a weapon hidden in a wall here. Um, can we do it? Yep, we can. We need to grab the tiles in the save room. Now this is the place that people normally save to save warp out of the mini dungeon. Um, And there are a couple more tiles that we need to pick up in this room. Um, the tiles actually in the upper uh, the upper left-hand corner of this room are named after me now uh, because I keep forgetting them. They are the Sabera tiles. Um, so normally there is one more thing that we would uh, clean up in Kerr, um, but again, I like to do things differently. So we're instead going to move straight into Eden cleanup. Um, so now we're back in Eden. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that we did not get here before, either because we couldn't or because we didn't want to yet because it's faster to do it this way. Um, oops, I missed one map tile here. Um, make sure that we get that. It's going to be important. We're not going to be able to come back for it later. I mean, technically we can come back for it later, but it's not good. Um, you might want to turn your volume down if you're listening at this point because there is a chance that I will trigger the loudest glitch in the game. Um, <laughs> uh, so you may want to, okay, oh, nope, there it is. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and eat, oh, shoot, we're gonna eat some door transitions to, to spare you that sound. Okay, you can turn your volume back up now. Um, time for another glitch. Um, I'm just going to clip myself uh, down into this room. We're going to come out here. So normally, in order to get here, you would need an item that I do not have yet to clear that staticky stuff. Um, and in fact, the item that I want is in this room. Um, and I could not have gotten it from where I was without doing that clip. Um, but now I am inside the silo. And... Uh, um, inside the silo, I can go ahead and move on to the next boss of this run, Clone. Uh, now, Clone is not really a boss. Um, and what I mean by Clone is not really a boss is this. Um... That was Clone. Um, but the game counts it as a boss and we have to kill it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, now, unfortunately, my copy of the game, and almost exclusively as far as I can tell my copy of the game, uh, can sometimes crash in the area that we're about to do, so uh, I'm just going to take a safety save there so that we can pick up where we left off if we need to. Um, sometimes the game auto-saves you there, 
um, but not always. Um, and I'm doing it backwards, so it seems even less likely to do it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and grapple clip there again. It's faster than the other than the long way around. Um, this room, there's really no tricks to. It's just fast movement to get all of the squares and the items. This is the room where my game sometimes crashes. So um, God bless and good luck. Um, I guess... Uh, Okay, it didn't crash. Uh, we're good. I think. I mean, probably. We're probably good. <laughs> okay, so um, we have cleaned out the entirety of the right side of Kerr. The left side of Kerr we've been to before, but there's a bunch of stuff that we weren't able to get before. Um, so that same displacement warp that I used earlier in order to move myself into the drone mini dungeon, I'm going to use that same trick here to save myself a bunch of walking around. I'm going to send the drone over in to pick up this range node. Um, range node makes some of your guns far fire farther. Um, and then Trace is just going to appear right next to the door that I want to be at. Now I'm going to fire an address bomb for the first time, and the address bomb is going to clear out that staticky stuff and enable me to get this weapon, um, which I literally do not care about. I do not even know what it is. Uh, um, it is, uh, but it is something that I need in order to uh, get a 100% clear. Um, everything about this is just about cleaning up tiles at this point. Um, so. Um, as I mentioned before, the blade buddies here are pretty dangerous. Um, at this, it is actually possible to die during this segment. Okay, um, so this is the needle. Uh, um, the syringes give you tentacles um, when you're at full health and those tentacles fire bullets. Because of course tentacles would fire bullets. Um, that is a thing that it makes sense for tentacles to do. Um, oh, I did not get... So this, this top square up here is actually very finicky. Um, but let's go ahead and make sure that we grab that. Okay, so now if I go back and check real quick. Yeah, we got everything in Eden. We're all done with Eden now. We never have to see Eden again for the rest of our lives um, if we don't want to. Um, and so we are going... So this is Ukana. This is the area that we skipped earlier um, with that grappling hook trick. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and save our game here. Um, and we are going to uh, go do some other cleanup. So uh, we're going to go through here. And from here, we are going to ride the big head. What is... Oh, that's interesting, I suppose. Um, but it's not the weapon that I want or the weapon that I care about. Uh, we're going to ride this over here. Um, this is, this actually takes us to, um, to the first area again. This is going to take us back to Erebu. We're not going to hang out here for too long. There's actually only one thing, um, well, four things technically, if you count each individual map tile as a thing. Um, so I'm going to grab an item that is over here. I'm going to grab these three map tiles. And we're just going to turn around and go back the way we came. Um, because we have better things to do than hanging out in the first area of the game. Um, because tentacles. Yes, that's right. Um, tentacles shoot bullets because tentacles. Um, so uh, the unfortunate thing about riding Araka is that Araka only takes us through the top of the area. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get the map tiles at the bottom of the area. And we're going to use uh, our, our little uh, dash um, drone hurling technique uh, to get here. Um, now there's a little side channel there that has an item in it that we want. We're not going to go through that yet, and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but this, this whole little arm that I'm proceeding now through is referred to... Um, this whole segment is usually referred to as spider heck because it's all kind of adjacent to that side room, um, which is the actual spider heck. Um, but we're going to go... Uh, it would be nice if I could actually do the thing. Um, so we're going to go up in here. Um, this is Telal's boss chamber again. Um, and there's a, a funny little uh, aspect of Telal's boss chamber, which is um, that if I put Trace right... Well, I probably actually didn't do that right. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. If I put Trace right there, 
and I pop the drone. Um, it takes me all the way back to the top of that vertical shaft that we were at before, and then I can just exit out into that little spur that I did not explore before. Um, so now, this is Spider Heck. Um, you can probably see why it's called Spider Heck. Um, and now, having done that that way, we can continue with the entire rest of the cleanup that we were going to do initially. Um, in the other two active routes, you do spider heck at a time where you just kind of drop down to it and then save warp uh, out at, at the end of exploring those tiles. Uh, this allows me to kind of combine two parts together. Um, a save warp takes about 12 seconds um, in both saving the game and uh, reloading the game later. Um, and that's even with optimal menuing. It's it's about uh, about 12 seconds. Um, so uh, I try to avoid doing uh, save warps where I can if it's like a reasonable thing to do. Um, there are some save warps that save you just a tremendous amount of time, um, but that one doesn't necessarily um, in combination with uh, all of the other things that we are going to try to do. So now um, this is this is the last little bit of cleanup in Kerr. Um, so we're going to go back into the Juicy Room. We haven't been here in a really long time. Um, it hasn't gotten less gross. Um, uh, there is an item hanging out here. We didn't get it before because it was not really convenient to do so. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab that now. But also there's a bunch of stuff hiding in here. Inside this little drone tunnel, there's a health fragment just kind of hanging out at the end. We're going to send our drone all the way through there. It's going to drill through these blocks pretty quickly because we've got a bunch of power nodes at this point. It's going to pick up that item for us. We're going to send that drone right back onto Trace, and we are going to jump up here and drill. Baby drill. Um, there is also this uh, weird little area back here. Um, and now we're going to make sure that we get all the map tiles, and then after we get all the map tiles, we're going to come here. Um, there is yet another weird little area down here, um, and that contains yet another weapon. There were two different weapons um, just kind of hanging out there. Um, this one's pretty cool. It's a little like a morning star. Okay, and now we're going to save warp again, and that's why we saved that um, for there, is so that we didn't have to walk our way out of that whole area, um, which is a big pain in the butt, frankly, in my humble opinion. Um, so... Um, I am now going to do uh, yet another wacky thing that nobody else does, which is I am going to clean up this particular area of Ukana uh, before we move on to uh, the rest of the game. Um, so there is a health node and a note here, um, and we are just going to drone dash and drone teleport ourselves to the top of this shaft. Uh, fun fact, in the no major glitches route, uh, any percent route, um, we use this technique to actually um, get to the last area of the game. Um, but here, all I'm going to do is use it to pick up a couple of items that... Uh, Otherwise, would be uh, things that I would have to come back and clean up later during Ukana cleanup. Um, but it is faster to, in, in general, it is faster to fall than it is to climb. Um, and so uh, this, th that's how we're going to go about this, uh, this little journey. Um, we're just going to fall back down here. And unfortunately, we hatched an egg there, and that, that was not ideal, but that's okay. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and just move out of this area, and I will show you how I was intended to come into this area, which is through this channel here. Um, now, the way that the game actually expects you to do this is to use the address disruptor to glitch through those walls, but I'm just going to dash through them. They're three tiles wide. Nobody cares. Um, and now we're back in Erebu. Um, you know, we came down this way much earlier in the game. Uh, we're going to come back down that way again, but first we're going to do the upper portion of Erebu. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here that we could not get before. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, the first thing that we're going to do uh, is we're going to come back to the original save room, and we are going to save our games because we're going to be save warping back to here quite a bit. Um, 
And, uh, you know, the, the big deal here is that um, we are about to get the best weapon in the game. It is not the most powerful weapon in the game, but it is just about the most useful. Um, and we'll be coming up on that in just a minute. Uh, now there is a little uh, side item that we have to get here. I have forgotten to get this before, which is just like the worst feeling. Um, but there is a little health note fragment there. Um, there's also a, a curious little thing here. I'm gonna fire an address bomb here. And what that's going to do is glitch all of the enemies in the room. And this little slug thing would normally pop out a bunch of flies, but instead it pops out a health node fragment. And that does count toward item completion. Um, I'm going to fire a bomb here too. Oh, nope, we're not going to menu like that. Now, fortunately, that does slow the in-game timer. So that did not actually cost me any more time than another um, any other menu. But uh, we're going to put in a passcode here. It's Dinger Gis Bar. It sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? Um, And now we have the flamethrower, uh, and uh, I want to go ahead and assign that to my primary weapon. Oh, and I want to save warp as well. I forgot. I should have done that right as soon as I got flamethrower. Uh, flamethrower is the best weapon in the game, hands down, um, at least of the ones that are available in speedrun mode. There are actually three weapons that are not available in speedrun mode. They're only available in story mode in secret areas that do not appear in speedrun mode because their locations are completely randomized. Um, okay, we're going to pick up a map tile there and pop the drone out there. We're setting up for another one of these displacement warps. Now, this displacement warp is going to save us from inputting another passcode in a later part of the run. So we'll pop the drone here after picking up this item, and that will put us up in another room. And we'll just go ahead and pop out here. Um, now uh, we're going to go ahead and explore a, a dead-end room up ahead, basically. Um, this is the thriller room. It is so-called because of all of the zombies. Okay, we have explored the entirety of Thriller Room, so we're just going to turn around and go right back out. Um, and dash and dash and kaboom, and we're just going to kaboom ourselves all over the place. Grab a, another Power Node Fragment, and uh, that is going to pop us out here. Now, uh, we're going to go up into the room. This is the room where we would have used the passcode to get into Thriller Room, which would have let us go into that upper area, but we didn't actually need to do that. Um, and so uh, it, it was actually pretty pretty much uh, faster just to uh, do that the way that we did it. Um, so it did allow us to move from, from one spur to the other uh, pretty quickly. We're going to come into this room. We could have gone into this room as soon as we got Nova, um, but it's not really, uh, it, it's a lot faster to move through here with both the drone and the red coat. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Yes. No. No. We sing some more songs. Oh, I got hit by a snail firing a dress bump. Jump, jump, dash, dash, jump, jump, dash, dash, save warp. Oh, and we're going to save warp back to the beginning of this area. Um, so one thing that is a little diff bit difficult um, is trying to remember to sing while I'm speed running. Um, but I will try to remember a little bit better. comment um yeah now it's the last pass 
Dance code room in the game. I think I input that right. Did I not input that right? I didn't hear the... I didn't input it right. Oh, uh, edit. Uh, no wonder. There we go. There's the room, and in here there's another weapon. There are quite a lot of weapons in this game, and most of them we don't use. Oh, I missed a map tile. <laughs> Trying to sing and remember to get all the map tiles at the same time is a little bit hard. Um, so we're, we're going to hold uh, uh, the singing until it's Journey to Silius time. Um, is how we're going to go about the rest of that. So this should clear us out of Erebu. Um, we have both all of the map tiles. <laughs> I'm glad that you like it, uh, Reboot. I'm really glad that you like it. Uh, okay, so now we are back in Absu. Um, we didn't get the save room earlier because we weren't able to jump high enough to grab the tile. Um, and so now we're just going to clear our way all the way to the bottom. Uh, we're going to grab the item that is hidden in there, which I believe is a health node fragment. And then we're going to go into the Fruit Loop room. Um, this room is terrible, not because it is difficult, but because it is uh, weirdly shaped. Um, and that makes it hard to move through quickly without accidentally, you know, cracking your drone on something. Um, all of the, like, weird little drillable things, um, they're just, like, make for difficult movement. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and pop ourselves there, and... Oof. And I cracked an egg. Um... Yeah, so w there's just basically all of these things buried under Absu, um, and we're we're going to get them. And again, like most of these things aren't very important. Like this weapon that we'll never see again, address bombs. They look cool, but they're basically useless to us at this point in the game because we have the flamethrower. And uh, like, who doesn't want a flamethrower? Um, Um, and so, you know, we're largely kind of plumbing through here for tiles at this point. Um, if, you know, we had a lot of donations at this point, uh, it would be a good time to read donations because everything here is pretty relaxed. Um, we are about to do a couple more glitches, um, but most of them are the same kind of grapple clips that you've already seen. Um, we are going to go through... Um, an area where, uh, whoop, uh, up here with the, at this is called the attic. Um, it's this upper area of Absu, and there's just tons and tons of this staticky stuff that we need to clear to get through. Um, we need address bombs for this portion of the cleanup, and... Um, firing them optimally so that you don't need to like wait for things is um, a subject of some study. <laughs> uh, there are lots of things about the 100% route because there's just so much of it that are not um, not optimized or not clearly optimized. And so there's really a lot of wiggle room. Um, I'm the third place record holder, uh, but I get to red coat uh, about two, uh, I'm capable of getting to red coat about two minutes faster than the world record holder, which means that the 124 30 something that is the current world record could be shaved down to at least a 122 30 something. And that, like, the idea that we were ever going to go below 125 was like a pipe dream a year ago. Um,. So 100% uh, has come a long way uh, in a relatively short amount of time. We're going to go ahead and grab this note. Um, position ourselves here and... Uh. 
Where's the door? Door, where are you? I'm very confused about where I am right now. There we go. Okay. <laughs> that took longer than expected. Axiom Verge and Journey to Silius. Um, assuming that I get Axiom Verge done in enough time, but I think we're, we're on pace for uh, some good Journey to Silius stuff. Um... Okay. Um, so, uh, basically by using a grapple clip there, we're able to get ourselves into, uh, a room without having to go down that long shaft. And that actually ended up taking me longer than going around the long way probably would have, um, because I got a little lost in the room. Um, and that's because I used a different position for the grapple clip than I normally do. Um, and that was, I should not have done that during a marathon. <laughs> Um, but we'll know for next time, and it didn't cost too much. It didn't, like, kill the run or anything, so, you know. Things definitely could have been worse. Um, this is, uh, you got Axiom Verge OST on purple vinyl. That is awesome. It is a really good soundtrack. Um... So as we're coming through here, um, there's a bunch of kind of back alleyways and stuff over here that we didn't get before um, because it was not advantageous to do so. And there was a whole bunch of items that we couldn't get. We're actually going to take a quick save here um, because we are going to be save warping back here in a moment. Um, the big deal here is uh, we're going to grab this item. and pass through here. And there's this little mini dungeon down here that um, it is not, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to walk out of this mini dungeon. Um, it takes too long. Um, so instead what we're gonna do is grab the item that's in here and we're gonna save warp again. Um, one of the many places where we have optimized for just like a couple of seconds worth of loss. Um, uh, though there are uh, kind of bigger time saves uh, coming up in some of the areas. Oh my gosh. It is starting to get warm in here. Okay, so a common thing to miss in this game is this note that's buried in the wall over here. Um, it is also a common thing for me to miss during a speed run. Um, so I made a note to myself to mention it during the commentary so that I wouldn't forget it. Um, so thank you all for letting me commentate myself so that I could remember to get that item at the right time. Um, I often have to go back for that, which is a pain in the butt. Um, the technique that we're using here um, to uh, go to this, uh, to get to this note a little bit faster, this is called P-Squeeze. Um, this was invented by our former world record holder, Willow the Whisper SR, um, who named it P-Squeeze because that is the part of the run where they are normally holding their pee in because they've been running for an hour and change and um, have been drinking a lot of water. That's P-Squeeze. Um, so, at this point in the game, really everything breaks down to how do you move about the world as quickly as possible and uh, acquire uh, everything that you possibly can. Um, and this is this is what we do, right? Like we just. We just dash and we drone and we clip and we drone and we dash and clip and drone and now we're in Z. We are done with absolute cleanup. Actually, let me let me just double check really quickly um, that yeah okay we got everything in Amsu. Did we get everything in Arabu. We got everything in Arabu. All right, cool. We're good. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving through Absu. Um, 
Okay, so Abisu is a little bit weirdly shaped, um, unfortunately. There's an item kind of hidden in here, uh, inside something that looks like it should be a wall, but it's... Um, there's another item hidden up in this little spur over here, um, and I have tried so many times to find a better way to turn this spur into uh, something really useful, but there's no kind of getting around it. You do have to go in there um, and walk back out. Um, so there we get the second needle, which means that when Trace is at full health, instead of two tentacles firing bullets, we will get four tentacles firing bullets because tentacles, I guess. Um, this room looks like its exploration is complete, but actually there's a hidden area up here uh, with a health node fragment. It's really easy to forget. I've forgotten this in so many runs that have gone from being 100% to being most percent. Um, okay, um, so we have yet another little spur that we have to go down. This is, this is what I mean when I say that Z is weirdly shaped. Um, everything in this is spurs. Um, that you have to like walk into and walk back out of. And the question is like, is it worth walking back out of the spur or is it worth save warping out of the spur? And in this case, it's worth walking back out of the spur. Um, but there are lots of places where it is just not. Um, so, you know, we're kind of... Please. Thank you. Um... We are launching our drone. There's an Aussie up here. Ah. I wish I had changed the music settings to something a little more audible. Now we are climbing down here to get an item. Oh, oops. Um, so now uh, we actually do need to go somewhere uh, that is retracing our steps because I made a boo-boo earlier in terms of um, what I should do early. So we're just going to come up here. We're going to go back up into this room. And we're preparing for the sword. So this is a technique that is called the Sabera Warp, or Swarp for short, not to be confused with the Save Warp, or Swarp for short. Um, so we send our drone out here like this after grabbing the note to drop down this hole and get some map tiles. And when we recall it, um, again, those drill blocks are going to displace us up and pop us right outside the boss room, which is a place that we need to go to grab map tiles and also to grab items. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and grab this health node. Um, and also, in the upper right-hand corner of the boss room over here, um, in a place that is relatively difficult to get otherwise, uh, is this little uh, power node fragment. Um, and then we're just going to pop out here. And come right back. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, set up for a save warp. We're going to save here. And go into this little mini dungeon. Now this little mini dungeon, it does not make sense to do with the drone by itself. Um, and it also doesn't make sense to walk out of it. Uh, so we're going to send Trace in here. And then at the end of this, we're going to save Warp out of it. I'm just going to walk our drone up there and pop this over there and pop this over there and so we fire the drone out there and again let Trace fall down the shaft. We jump, 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 jump and grab this and then we're going to pop the drone again and Trace is just going to wake up at the bottom of the shaft. And yeah, so Trace is here now. And that should complete Z. We're gonna take a real quick look at the ooh, at the map. Okay, yeah, that's everything. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and save warp back to that save point that we just checkpointed at. 
Um, we now have two more areas in the game that we need to clear out um, and then just defeat the last three bosses uh, that exist. Um, and then we'll be done. So we're kind of coming up on the end here. Um, so we're going to go back to Ukana. And in Ukana, we are just going to collect all of the items that we didn't get before. Look at that beautiful flamethrower. And there are our tentacles firing bullets because we're at full health. We have four of them. We're in a nice little speedo. I should have made that a donation incentive. Angie, you would have ponied up for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Next time. I'll remember for next time. Um, so this is Ukana. This is what it looks like um, when you are not hallucinating and when you are actually exploring it. Um, we haven't seen any of this before, so there's a whole bunch of Ukana to cover. Um, or we haven't seen much of this before, um, so there's a whole lot of Ukana to cover. Um, there is this absolutely awful side room with the slugs. Oh god, the slugs. Uh, I... The, those, those slugs just burst open and then there are flies everywhere and it's... Ugh. Yeah. Um, and that room is a little hard to move through quickly. Um... So, uh, unfortunately, basically the only thing that we didn't show off was the hallucination sequence. Um, and that is just not seen in, in this version of the route. In the other version of the 100% route, um, it, the one that Willow runs, um, you do uh, the beginning of the game as though it were no major glitches, um, which does actually do the hallucination sequence, um, which means that you do get to see that. Um, so that's that's an advantage of that for uh, exhibitions. Um, though glitches are so much fun. I love glitches, um, which is a, a large part of why I run this route is, um, and, and the particular version of it that I run, um, it's just chock full of glitches. Just absolutely overwrought with them. Um, yeah, so now we're just climbing up to the, oh, that was a little bit sloppy, um, the top of Ukana. We're going to go ahead and grab a couple more tiles over here, and uh, we have one more, uh, no, sorry, two more items that we need to grab in this area. Um, one is a weapon which, again, we're not going to use. It is the second to last weapon we will get in the game. Um, I don't even remember what this one is called. You definitely do not use it. Um, we're going to clean up some map tiles over here. And send our drone through this little area. I just realized that there's a faster way to do that. I just realized. Um, I will have to... Uh, maybe there isn't, actually. Okay. Um, and if I check this now, yep, we've got everything in Ukana. So we are now ready to proceed to the last area of the game. We're not on PV pace, we're not on world record pace, or anything like that. Um, and that's okay. Uh, but we are on a pretty good pace for um, doing this. I am going to pop up here to grab this. Um, and we are approaching the third to last boss of the game, Sentinel. Um, you may want to turn your volume down. Sentinel's loud. Um... 
So basically all I'm, da I'm doing here is dashing into Sentinel and using the damage from my dash to damage him, in addition to Flamethrower and also tapping the drill every so often to get some drill frames in there. Um, and he dies pretty quickly. Um, in the uh, regular any percent route, not no major glitches, but the unrestricted any percent route, um, there is, you can basically, oh, uh, you can basically skip Sentinel using the grappling hook um, because it turns out that the um, part of the ceiling that disappears when Sentinel dies is only three tiles wide. So if you combine damage boosts and swinging with your grappling hook, you can actually get yourself into a position where you can use your coat dash to get through it, um, which is pretty cool. Um, saves about 30 seconds. I'm going to take a safety save here because we are going to uh, fight in a little bit what is legitimately the hardest boss in the game. It is the second to last boss of the game. He is completely optional. You do not have to fight him. And he is Zeder Hul. Zeder Hul is um, a reboot of the very first boss from the game, Zeder. Um, Zeder Hul has armor plating. Um, Zeder Hul has stronger weapons. Zeder Hul is fast. And Zeder Hul is angry. Uh, in most, in any run where you do not need to kill all of the bosses, you do not fight this guy. There is no reason to do it, but in 100% it's actually not too bad. You basically just do this, and he's gonna, he's gonna bite it at this point. Yeah, so. And we don't have to wait for his death animation to finish, we just have to get the death animation going. Um, so we're just, we're not gonna stick around for that. Um, and we still have more health at this point, um, even though half our health is gone, uh, than we would have in any percent. So there's no real reason to stop here. Um, we're not we're not liable to take uh, important amounts of damage at this point. Um, in here, we are going to find the last weapon in the game, uh, the reverse slicer. The reverse slicer is um, only useful in low percent. <laughs> Um, and it fires kind of like a boomerang. It is actually a reference to Axiom Verge 2, in which the protagonist's main weapon is a boomerang. Um, we're not going to use this to fight the last boss, but we certainly could have. Um, uh, one of our board moderators, Code Peace, recommended that that be a donation incentive um, to fight the last boss with Reverse Slicer. Um, but we're not going to do that. Um, we are going to do a little bit of a... Uh, we're going to meme a little bit on the last fight. Um, because it's the last fight, of course. Um, oops, right. I can't check map while I'm... I have all of the items. I now have every item in the game. Um, and, and this is something that we can check real quick. Um, by just... Oh, no! I didn't get all of the map tiles or all of the items in Kerr. I messed something up. This is a most percent. I see what I missed. I missed the drone mini dungeon on the way to Gertab. All right, um, I'm gonna pause here and leave it up to the audience. Folks, do you want me to go back for those items so that this is a real 100% run or do you want me to most percent it? I'm gonna give folks a little bit of time and I'm gonna save here. We've got one vote for go back. Pliskin wants to get some journey in. Kirby wants to wants to most percent. Alright. Angie wants to go back. Oh, it's tied! Anybody else in the audience got a vote? How much time do we have left? Uh, we only have... Okay, so... Okay. The audience has spoken. We have four votes for most percent. Sigh. All right. 
Um, I'm gonna drop an address bomb here. Come on, let me through. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna meme. Um, it is not possible for me to be damaged at this point. So I'm just gonna sit here and fire my flamethrower in a downward direction until the boss is dead. Since we're not super concerned about time saves at this point. Marathons are often most percent. I mean, so, so we'll, there's, there's nothing about this run that is technically alive in any like meaningful sense. It's not a PB attempt um, or anything. So I really did want to, I, I, I wanted to know what the audience would like more. So, um, and, uh, It probably would have cost another, like, two minutes to run back. Yeah, so. So that was just about a 90-minute run with 98% items and 99% map. There were two, no, three map squares that I missed and one item. Um, all right, so we're going to switch over to Journey to Silius. Um, and in order to do that, I am going to need to switch my layout. Um, so, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for the GG's folks, uh, Vex of Nexus, Neomagus X, Synthpop is back, Pliskin LD, Kendricus, Kirby Games, YT, Acid Crew, um, uh, all right, staff, if you can let me know when you're ready for me to change my layout, um, and... I'll, I can shift over, um, and, and set up for Journey to Silius. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and shut down uh, Axiom Verge and start getting start getting Journey to Silius. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let Roblox Party begin. Okay, you're ready to go. All right, great, thank you. 
Um, okay, folks. Uh, we are back with uh, uh, one of the games that has literally the best soundtracks on the entire Nintendo Entertainment System. This is Journey to Silius. Um, Journey to Silius was originally supposed to be a licensed Terminator video game, and it really shows in the artwork. Um, it also had a completely different theme in, well, not a completely different theme, but a slightly different theme in Japan where it was called Rough World, and your main character was a soldier, um, as opposed to, well, I'll let you see the intro. After many years of Space Colony development, Jay's father has passed away. Space Colony development. The evening news reported that Jay's father's death was an accident. Several days later, Jay finds a floppy disk left in his father's room. What could be on it? What could be on it? I hear the terrorists are planning against the colony development. You must complete my mission if I cannot. They will pay the price for the death of my father. That driving sound. And here we go. Song is great, this song is great, and this game is a lot of fun, and it is easy for me to sing along to. Now it's time for the musical portion of this stream. I am singing to this song. This game is really great, and you may not have played it before, but it is very good. I recommend you try it out. It is a lot of fun, but also it is a very hard game, and it's no doubt that this game is NES hard. It's harder than many other NES games you've played. And I'm taking quite a lot of damage. We're gonna try to do a one credit clear, so, well, we'll see. Ooh, that was rough. Um, so we're not likely to make it through the first level without dying, but we'll see what happens. This boss is too hard and I don't like fighting it and there are these bugs that drop out of a helicopter and they jump around and it sucks a lot. Yeah, so... I took too much damage in the first portion of that, so uh, we're unlikely to actually get a one credit clear in at this point because I took a death on the first stage. Um, and uh, let's not let's not reset on that account. I'll try to take an intentional game over at a, a convenient time if um, it makes sense to. And these are bugs. They are hopping little bugs. Robot bugs, why are they bugs? Why do they do so much damage with their bodies and who? It's so hard to sing along to the boss theme. It's hard to sing along to this. Jump, jump, slide, slide. And now we switch to the machine gun to shoot the eye of the helicopter. Why do helicopters have eyes? It does not make a lot of sense. There is no need for us on a helicopter. It's just a flying machine that should be piloted by people. And that is the boss. Now notice that I took a hit. Beat the boss. Now the level is done. Um... You can actually die from those hits um, after the boss kills you, or after you kill the boss, the boss can kill you, ties go to the boss, feel this driving beat. This stage is determination. Let's try to not take 
quite so many hits from these things. This stage is hard. All stages in this game are hard. But we will try to not take too much damage here and die. Fast, I was going too fast. Why did I go so fast? This isn't a speed run. I'm not trying to speed run. Please don't go too fast. Me, pay attention. I'd like you to pay attention to what's going on in the game so you don't lose too much health and die. Don't die. Take it slow, take it slow, that's not slow, why is this thing so top heavy, that's not useful for robot, please, we need to know, Ugh. well that was bad. Okay, now we're gonna run. Why is this thing so top heavy? Do you know? What? Yeah, rip. It's time to fight a big tank that has arms and it launches a ping. I don't actually know what it is. That was far. That was near. Near. Far. There's the far. There's the near. There's the far. There's the far. There's the near. That boss is dead. That boss can be very deadly. Um... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take an intentional game over at the beginning of stage three. Um, so that I don't game over later in the stage. Um, you get two extra continues in this game. Don't go too fast, but this song is really good, so make the stage last, so that people hear the song. It's a great song. This is a great song. This game is so good, it's really so good. It's got good music and it controls well. So good, this game is so good. And this is a research lab. Ooh, 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 ooh. These lasers have a pattern, they go short and long. I took a hit that I didn't want to take there. I'm gonna try not to take one like that again. Yes, I may not fail. I can beat this game. In the time that we have left, I could beat this game, I've done it before, you see, I could clear this game when... Oh, I want that. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know why I jumped into damage. No, why I jumped in 
to damage those floating bots. They are pretty scary, I'd say. They can kill you pretty quick if you're not careful to stand your ground. Then they won't be around. You'll shoot the robots and they will explode. And it will be good for everyone but the robots. It's not good for them when they explode. It's bad. It is quite hard, and I am probably going to die before I get to the boss, which will not be that great. It is pretty unlikely that we will find health before we get to the part that sucks. There is a part of this level where it's very hard not to take any damage anymore. It is not this part. It is over here. Use homing missiles, use homing missiles, and we will- oh, hey, I actually made it to the boss. Um, it is technically possible for me to kill this thing without it killing me. Ah, but I didn't succeed that time. Womp womp. Fun. This boss fight is mostly cake, but sometimes it can hit you, and that's not great for you. That can kill you, eh? Can't sing along to that fast part. Ooh, 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 ooh. And that's the boss. That's stage three. Da, 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 dum, bum, 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 bum. Now, if we can make it through stage four without using one of our continues, um, this game is basically in the sack. So we'll just have to be kind of careful. This game is quite hard. This game is quite hard. This is the last stage with original music. The next stage recycles the first stage music. This game reuses some music. It uses the first stage song as the last stage theme, and that is kind of weird. Why not just make up one more song for this game, which is otherwise so good and it has such great music, and I love it a lot. Love it a lot. Ooh, I love this game quite a lot. It is good. It is so much fun to play. I really recommend that you give it a shot if you haven't. I found out that this game when I was in college, which was some time ago. Some time ago. Quite some time ago. Quite some time ago. Almost 20 years. Quite some time ago. I was nine in college very recently. I am quite old. This game is so good and I love to shoot robots and they shoot back at me. These flying things are annoying. They don't take very many hits, but they're hard to hit without a damage. Ding, 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 ding. 
Why are these little sneaky things? Why are they in this stage? Who decided to build the snake hoppers? What purpose could they serve? Oh no. Ooh. Oh wow. I got the health. I got the health. How to get the health? I don't know how I got the health. I don't know how I didn't take any damage at that part. That part sucks. It sucks a lot. And this stage is so hard and I don't know how I did. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well at the stage, which is pretty great. We might be able to beat this game after all, even though it's quite hard. It is a hard game. It's quite hard. It is a hard game. No! This is a hard game. This is a hard game. And that... Uh, unfortunately, those falling platforms are really um, uh, quite bad um, because it's, it's hard to know when you're going to be able to jump again. Um, and that was really the problem was that my jump got locked. Um, and so my jump inputs were getting eaten. Um, that is the like only part of this game where I have control complaints. Um, is that, uh, if you, is those falling platforms. Now we get to... How's it going? Hey, good. Are we out of time? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. <laughs> we Especially didn't quite make it. that death, that sucks. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it's totally fine. Well, this was super fun. Thank you so much. I, I and I'm also sorry you, you kind of, like, the run got bored too. Oh, no. It's... Spot basically marathon tradition to most percent um yeah. so uh it it, it just Still, happens like my jaw was just hanging for, for most of that i'm like and this is why i don't run this anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, insanity thank um, you i just couldn't comprehend like 90 percent <laughs> we have tutorials if anybody wants to learn by the way um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's surprisingly accessible. Um, and if nobody's played Axiom Verge, play Axiom Verge, because it's like the Metroid game that, you know, we should get, that hasn't happened in how many years? Um, yeah, play, play Axiom Verge, it's worth it. It's got a killer soundtrack, amazing gameplay, it's hard as, I don't know, insert, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's fun too, and it's got a good story. So. Yeah, and so definitely. Mary, did you have a good time? I had a great time, thank you. Perfect. Definitely look like you enjoyed it. You, uh, you got us almost to four hundred dollars, which is killer. That's awesome. Um, thank you, everyone who donated, um, and I'm glad that we got to meet the sing along percent incentive. Uh, next time I'll include Justin Bailey so that uh, we get we get a little more cash for that speedo. Uh, I, I turned over and I looked at the screen and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was in the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, right, well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you so much to all of the Retro Block Party staff. This has been a wonderful experience. Um, it's definitely been cool watching you for sure. Awesome. Um, We are going to drag Benny Ben down here. Ben, how you doing, man? Hello? It sounds like you're saying, like it looks like you're saying stuff on Discord, but we can't hear you. I'm sorry.
We'll do the intermission dance while... He can barely hear me. Okay. Uh, we can't hear you at all. Uh, Hello? Hey, there he is. Okay. Yeah, cool. I'm here. That works. I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize things were going on. My bad. <laughs> nope. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Totally fine. <laughs> Man, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm fired up for what I'm going to be doing here. So looking forward to it. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're excited too. Van, you're going to be playing two other first games on uh, on RBP uh, tonight. Um, what are those going to be? Uh, so I'm going to be playing uh, Newtopia and its sequel, Newtopia 2, uh, which are games for the TurboGrafx-16. I'll actually be doing speed runs of both of them and I'll be sharing all the glory of the system and these games and all the inspiration that comes along with it. So if you're not familiar, uh, buckle in. This is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm really That's hype. I have a couple of awesome, uh, Met uh, not Metroid, uh, Zelda like games. You guys are going to love these. Um, super, super fun. Also, you have a donation incentive, no? I do. Yes. So for Newtopia 2, you can actually name the main character, uh, the hero of the game, and, and it, you can enter up to six characters. So I'll be playing the U.S. version so that we can do that. So I will say whoever is the top donator throughout the course of Newtopia will be able to decide that main character's name once we get to it. In New I, I mean, you name it right off the bat. So, um, so yeah. So whoever would like to do that, be sure to uh, get your donations in. I'm also going to preface that by saying, please keep the donation name appropriate. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, certainly. That uh, should go without saying. I don't want to have to uh, have to disqualify anyone. So, yeah, guys, right. donations for the, the uh, hero for Newtopia 2. Uh-oh, I Correct. my Discord just crashed. Can anybody still hear me? Hey, we can still hear you. Okay, cool. That was scary. I just saw a like, red flash on my screen. All right. Um, yeah. So start those donations up. Top donator will uh, pick up that uh, that name. All right. Sabera, do you have any parting words before uh, we switch over? Um, yeah. Uh, so if you like what you saw, um, you know, I'm, I'm always doing Axiom Verge, a bunch of retro games over at my channel, Sabera Macia at uh, twitch.tv slash Um And uh, I want to thank the Axiom Verge speedrunning community um, for being just a really welcoming place. Um, I popped up at the beginning of April um, just like with a random strat question about like how to do a particular glitch. Um, kind of sight unseen. And uh, they just like adopted me into their family. Um, and it's been, it's been great. Um, and I wouldn't be here without them. So. Thank y'all. Very cool. All right. So, Sabera, you know what to do. You're going to count down from five. Van, you're going to count up from five once Sabera goes offline. And then you're going to go online. Okay? Sounds good. And I'm ready to go. All right. All right, Sabera. Five, you ready? four, three, two, one.